Hi, I'm Ricky Frank. I'm going to show you how I use ammo coat to make it much easier when I'm firing enamels in my kiln. I've got a screen and a trivet. I've got a piece of firing cloth. I've got several pieces of copper that have enamel on the backs. I've got a old paintbrush and I've got my jar of ammo coat. In the enameling world, most people call this Scalex, but it's also sold as Amicote, and that's what's on this jar. It's called Amicote. I know that it has some kind of clay base. When I pull it out, it looks kind of grayish brown, and there's no glass in it. So when I paint it onto the back of a piece, and fire it on here, it's sealing the back so the back is no longer glassy. The reason I like to use it is when I put pieces on trivets, I've got several things I have to consider that can be factors in my enameling. First of all, the trivet is going to soak up the heat, so the firing process is going to take longer. Second, I've got to figure out how many trivets I can put on here and where to place them if I want to fire several pieces at the same time. And then last, it's a little wobbly. And sometimes if I have an odd shape, a little more odder than the circle, it can get unbalanced and tip over. So whenever possible, I like to avoid using the trivets. So the Amicote really helps with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ammo coat onto the back and fire my piece. When the enamel melts, the ammo coat is going to not fire like glass. It's just going to get stuck onto the back here, and it's going to seal it so that the back no longer looks shiny. Now, if I put this onto my screen with the ammo coat on the back, it would work. And for many years, I did fire my pieces like that. But I found that I got little marks because the enamel is still getting molten. So I got little texture marks on the back here. And sometimes if I didn't have a good layer of ammo coat, it would get a little stuck. So what I found was something called a firing cloth. The firing cloth can sit on my screen and I can place my pieces directly on here and fire it. If I don't use the ammo coat, the pieces will pop off the firing cloth, but I will have lots of pattern stuck onto the piece left from the firing cloth. And over time, this firing cloth will start to fray. And once it starts to fray, then it disintegrates pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do to make this piece pop right off the firing cloth and to keep the integrity of the firing cloth for longer so I don't waste money is I'm going to paint my Scalex onto the back, and then I'm going to fire it on the firing cloth. So let me show you how I do that. It's pretty darn simple. I'm going to take a little bit of my Scalex, or actually it's ammo coat, and I'm going to paint it onto the back. I'm going to start in the center and work my way towards the edges, and I'll explain why in a second. And I think I'll show you on the white so we can see it a little better. Here we go. Now I get a lot of students that ask me, how thick does it need to be? And that's a really good question. Well, if I think about what's going to happen, the enamel is going to melt and the ammo coat is going to stick in place. So wherever the thinnest layer of ammo coat is touching the glass, it will fuse. But where there are thicker areas of ammo coat, let's go ahead and put like a big glob of this on here. Well, that ammo coat is not glass, and it's not going to stick together where it's not touching the glass. So even though this would work, in subsequent firings, this would start to crumble off. And even though I know that's not a problem, many students start to worry that it's falling off the back and do they need to put more on it. And also it starts getting in the way. And 
So if I can keep it thin, it's going to be much easier to deal with. The reason I put it onto the middle is it's going to act as a resist for enamel on the front. If I get scale, I, mean, I keep calling it scalex, it's, it's really amicote. If I get it onto the front and it gets fired in place, I can't get enamel onto the front. I could paint it or sift it, but it won't stick when it's fired. So I always make sure before I fire my piece that I've wiped it off. Just wiping it off with my finger will do fine. But the reason I started in the center was I can take it to the edge and have more control so I'm not getting it running over the edge. So we've got that and I've got a clean front. So I always make sure that I'm going to check the front to make sure there is no amicote on the front before I fire it. If I do get it on there, I need to grind it off with a grinding stone or a diamond burr so that I can get a new layer of enamel on the front. So another question that students ask me is, do I need to have this dry before I fire it? And the answer is no. As soon as this goes into the kiln, that heat is going to dry that right away. So sometimes I just put it right on the firing cloth and fire it. Sometimes I let it air dry and do something else. And sometimes I put it aside for a day or a week or until I'm ready to do something uh, and then turn my kiln on and fire it later. So there's not a right way to do it. But let me show you a really cool thing about using the fire cloth and the amicote. Let's say I've done an intricate bit of enameling on here and then I realize, oh gosh, I forgot to put the amicote on the back. Well, is it too late? Well, it might be too late to turn this over and put it on here because it would be difficult to handle this piece without ruining what I did on the front. And it would be really difficult to try to do it from underneath. So what we can do is to take our amicote and actually paint it right on to our firing cloth. And what will happen here is that amicote will fire into the threads of my firing cloth and then I could take my piece, even though it doesn't have amicote on the back, and put it right onto there and fire it and it will be very similar to the piece that had the amicote on it originally. What's also nice is that amicote will stay in place and I can just keep using that screen rather that firing cloth over and over. So I've started to just put amicote on all my firing cloths to begin with, and I still put the amicote on the back, but this gives me a double insurance about having the enamel stick to the firing cloth. So one last thing, a little tip about when you're cooling your piece and removing these. If I try to remove this piece, while it's hot, it tends to stick. And if it sticks, it will start to fray your firing cloth. So what I do is I let it cool down maybe 15, 20 seconds, and then this piece will pop right off. I hope this video was helpful. For more info, please contact us. Mm -hmm.